good kill. Well, hello, this is Jeff of Telflare Mouse. Today we have a very exciting new experimental projectile to demonstrate for you, and I'm sure you're going to enjoy it. But first, I want to remind you not to fall prey to the scammer who is trying to impersonate me. Always look for the check mark next to my name, verifying that it is actually me. I also want to talk about paid sponsorship. You may notice that I never use these, even though I get offers all the time for them. Now, I could be using this time to try to convince you to buy a product that I wouldn't buy myself, or I could ask you to passively support the channel by simply turning off your ad blocker. I get it, the ads are annoying, they're stupid. Even if you skip through them, we'll still make a little bit of money and be able to afford to buy some new equipment. And now back to your regularly scheduled program. Today we have a very aggressive looking slug made by Mr. K USA. As a fellow machinist, I can really appreciate the precision and just beauty of these slugs. They're almost too nice to shoot. These are called the Broken Arrow. Now let me show you its features. These have a mild steel body with sharp cutting edges. Now inside, what I thought was a Phillips head screwdriver bit is actually a steel and tungsten arrowhead penetrator. And there's an inner core made of aluminum that is meant to keep the weight down. But they are still pretty heavy, weighing in at 39.2 grams or 1.39 ounces. So these should have a pretty hefty kick still. Now on the base of these, I'm trying something new here. I uh, stuck some reflective tape on there and I put a black stripe on there so we can observe how fast these things are rotating as they fly through the air. Now whether this makes it easier to see or not, uh, we'll find out, but it won't screw anything up. Now as far as our recipe goes, we'll be using an X12X gas seal. Ballistic Products says this is the most efficient gas seal in the world and the more I use these, the more I like them. On top of that, we'll put a cork wad. My friend Alexi from St. Petersburg sent me a big bag of those. And as a little tribute to Danny, he made these leather wads several years ago and gave me a little bag of these. So we'll use that too. And that all should give us really good support for this heavy slug. Now the Broken Arrow is a subcaliber projectile, meaning it's a little smaller than the actual bore. Now sending a steel slug down a steel bore is never a good idea. I mean, first it's gonna damage it, but second, it's not gonna engage the rifling at all. So the solution to that is the discarding Sabo, made of plastic, very thin plastic. And this will fill that space and give us an interference fit, an extremely tight fit, in fact, that will engage the rifling and keep it centered in the bore. We'll be using this really pretty looking three inch or 76 millimeter primed hole and 35 grains of long shot powder. That should give this thing a velocity of over 1500 feet per second. Okay, let's shut up and shoot. Ciao, ciao, ciao. Welcome back, Telflator folks. OG and Jeff behind the camera out here with you today. We're gonna fire this thing today and see how accurate it is. It, it, it's a heavy little It's bugger. supposed to penetrate everything. He says it's gonna poke holes in things. Everything, Jeff? Yeah, that's what he told me. Everything, Jeff? That's right. All right, so we do have a guest shooter waiting for us back in the shade too. I'm gonna get a couple of these on target and uh, then we're gonna turn it over to uh, another shooter. See how we can do. Okay, let's see if that Goatar red dot is still on zero or not. All right, here we go, when you're ready. Uh, I'm ready. Oh, wow, 1544. What's the matter? 1544, no, I had a mule kick Did, to recoil. Oh, I forgot to warn you about <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, thanks about that. <laughs> oh, wow. We put a drop, maybe two drops, of yellow food coloring in the cavity of the slug. This gave a really cool looking effect. Now if we look a little closer, we can see that the slug is actually very stable in flight. Sometimes my recipes are spot on, other times I screw things up, but this time all the components that I chose seem to be working well together. Yeah, what happened? They're closer to that side of the world, so that could be it. Uh, a little, little high and right, hit the, uh, what level of armor is this? I don't know, it's, it's, it's some kind of military... 70. It's, mil it's it's very thick. It's, it's soft body armor, but it's really thick. It's, it's like thicker thick than, than the whatever police it's issue stuff. Here's the important part. We saw it go right through. 
the back of the soft body armor. This was an unperforated piece. Yep. We got a nope. pass through. Not even a hiccup. Just went right through it. Hit him up here in his uh, upper duodenum. <laughs> and important part, this is a brand new exit hole right here. Wow. So not only came out, but as you can tell from old rounds, this one kind of shredded things on its way out. Lead plate. Here we go when you're ready. Yeah, I'm ready. Wow. Trigger pull felt good. Okay, shot number two on the 30 pound lead plate. Now the slug impacted inch and a half or maybe two inches high. The lead plate absorbed all the energy from that slug. The broken arrow is spinning at over 30,000 RPM and slinging out that yellow dye the entire 20 yards. Now let's take a look at the damage. Slightly high and right again. I was trying to compensate down here in the bottom left corner, but whatever. Um, it plowed in there. I mean, it really gave my shoulder a thump, but it also really plowed into that lead plate. And if you zoom in here, Jeff, you can see the base of that thing. It is immovable. There's no way that thing's coming out of there. But you can see this little pedals on the side. And then what everybody wants to know. Oh, wow. Almost made it out the back. It was really oh, trying. Oh, wow. Yeah, we had we had that thing on a little bit of an angle, which is kind of normal. Yeah, it's kind of a it's a fair test. People will like, oh, you, but you had it at an angle, but that we always do that. The angle has to be there for safety reasons, right? Otherwise, we would be getting all these things sent back to us. Yeah, yeah. But did you guys see the uh, the yellow mist flying down range? That, that was really cool. That looked. I, I guess we'll keep doing that. We'll try red next, though. So. You know what's kind of funny though is that yellow mist was the name of my. Uh, Norwegian death metal band in the early 90s. We did mostly like Joni Mitchell covers, uh, some Joni Mitchell ballads, but man, put to death metal, we really rocked the house. <laughs> anyway, all right, my shoulder's getting a little tired, so we have recruited Robert Baker. Robert, what's your organization? It's, it's Rear Guard Warrior Ministries, and we do veterans range days for veterans. Yeah. Okay. Robert came out here to get a little donation for uh, tomorrow's event that he's holding, a free range day. So we thought we would put Robert behind the shotgun. Robert, his wife, and his mom are all fans of uh, both channels, and they clearly don't have Netflix or anything worthwhile. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to run down range and put up a little head that has that, a steel. That, that is a Swedish military helmet. How can you oh, tell? That's what it's called. How can you tell it's Swedish? Because it says, Orgy smork smork, Orgy smork smork. <laughs> All right, an untouched Swedish military. Yeah, I've been waiting to shoot this with something cool for a long time, so this is the perfect opportunity. It's been in the back of Jeff's truck. This uh, it was this or a cabbage, right? Ready? Answer. Yep. Wow. You got some foam in Dang. And a hole in the helmet. <laughs> wow. Now, we didn't give Robert any practice shots at all. In fact, he didn't even know he was going to be shooting today. He thought he was just going to watch us film a, a video. So this is an exceptional shot for someone who never picked up that shotgun before. Once again, the broken arrow exceeded our expectations. Beautiful accuracy, stability, and penetrating power. I think we got a new shooter. Greg, right. you can just go home. I'll see you guys later. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and take my helmet and go. Hey. Um, <laughs> Most that. accurate shot yet. I'll be your Vanna White, Jeff. <laughs> okay. Okay, so what happened? That was a nice, accurate shot. How did that feel on your shoulder? That one was hard. See, that was yeah, a hard. I told you. These are heavy. These are very heavy. Oh, yes. And then underneath here, look at that. So we've got leather from the, uh, from the leather liner in here. Leather shoved into his cranium <laughs> and pulled out the other side. That was kind of cool. Yeah. And check this out. Robert's shot actually severed both straps. <laughs> We were going to be mad that we shot that helmet, but it was, it was like a helmet I got on eBay. It had like a Harley sticker. Some dude was driving that around thinking he was really cool with oh, yeah. a Swedish helmet. He had an old lady. He couldn't afford the, the German helmet, right? No. <laughs> Isn't that the end? Oh, we're torturing this poor guy. Now we're getting him a little tiny target of green beans. Okay, are you ready? I'm ready. Anytime you are. Okay, I'm ready. Go. Oh, 
Oh no. I missed. Don't that was... take your time. Well, Robert's first shot was so accurate we got a little cocky. Uh, he just barely missed that can. So we decided to give him another try at the same target. There you go. Dang! <laughs> I'm glad we did that one over. There you go. Now a second shot was off by maybe about an inch, but the damage was still very impressive. Now here's a challenge for you. Grab your buddy who's never shot your shotgun before, set up a two inch can at 20 yards and use the best factory ammo you can find. And I highly doubt he'll hit it on the first shot. Okay, the aluminum plate. Okay, I'm ready. Okay. Oh, listen to that ring. Here comes the broken arrow, and it almost looks like it's rocket assisted with that cool vapor trail. And it transferred every ounce of energy into that two inch thick aluminum block. And it more or less came to a dead stop. You can see it kind of tumbling above the target right there. Look here, <laughs> that made a bigger divot in that aluminum block than most of the rounds that we shoot. Really plowed in there. And if you zoom in there, you'll see that it's little core. Here's the slug we found on the ground. It's little steel penetrator core, it's arrow. The shape of the slug and it expanded a lot. And the slug's about 8 billion degrees right now, so. But if you come in close on that, it's kind of cool. Mushroomed a little bit. Yeah. Okay, we got the 40 yard jug shot. That doesn't sound right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, ready? I'm yard, ready. 40 yard jump. Oh. Oh, wow. Chunk out of the side. Ready? 40 yard jump. Oh. Okay, we've doubled the distance and we're still using that yellow food coloring. But the accuracy of this one, it was just not too impressive. Now, a hit's a hit. I understand that. But I'm starting to think that as cool as the yellow dye is, I think it might be throwing off the accuracy a little bit. So for the next shot, no die at all. We'll see how the slugs do without us screwing around with it. Okay, now the 50 yard zombie shot. Is that a zombie or a gremlin or a ghoul or a poltergeist? <laughs> poltergeist? Yes. Yeah, sort of a zombie child. I don't know what it is. It's creepy and Kind of sounds like he slapped it. Yeah. yeah. I heard a little slap. Now I screwed up and failed to save the high speed camera shot on this one. But when we slow down the real time footage, we can still see a few frames of the slug traveling and accurately hitting that target. We're about an inch and a half uh, left of the orange sticker. So that's an impressive shot. Yeah, with just, look at the, it left like an X mark, kind of the shape of the slug. And then entry look, look left out the back. Wow. That's what we call an exit. See, I was I really I was really hoping that that's it didn't it wouldn't shatter that thing. It would be able to shoot it over and over again. Yeah, seems to be like, pretty durable. This is almost like a milk carton material or yeah, something. Yeah, it's like stiffer milk carton material. Thick a thick milk carton, yeah. PVC DF UHMP LBC I don't know. Oh. She lost her head. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry Nancy, we uh, lost your head there. everything on the table. Wow. The broken arrow had no problem penetrating the 16 inch ballistic gel block, leaving a massive temporary wound cavity the entire length of the block. Now the cutting teeth were no gimmick at all. Those left some pretty nasty looking spiral cuts as the slug spun down the gel. 
Now the projectile hit the Kevlar barrier at the end and you can see it on the lower left corner there coming back. And the weird thing here is we expected to just find it on the table or somewhere on the ground. That thing just vanished at that point. We looked and looked and looked for that thing and never found that slug. But at the little glimpse that we did see of the slug, it didn't look like we had any deformation. Now when we were cleaning up, which we always do, I uh, picked up a number of the Sabos and you could see how the slug is just embossed in those things. That is a very tight fit and you need that to get the right spin and we nailed it this time. Any final words? You guys saw it here in the jail. It made uh, one hell of a, of, a, uh, of a wound, temporary wound cavity. Left its little cork wad in there about, I don't know, three inches deep. And then we were unable to find the slug. I, I could see it on the high-speed camera. It, 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 it plowed all, it had no problem going through the gel block. It still had a lot of energy. Hit the Kevlar down there, and then it came bouncing back. Well, if, one of, if, really one of the viewers, if one of the viewers sees it and it gives us an exact yeah. GPS coordinate, we will send you some embroidered Tough Leader Mouse oven mitts uh, <laughs> as a gift. So, no, impressive slug. Very impressive. Yeah. It uh, busted through a lot of stuff and reasonably accurate. Actually, pretty dang accurate. I, 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 as cool as the dye is, the, the yellow dye, <laughs> I think that was screwing us up. Sure. I think that. Yellow mist. Yeah. It, 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 just farting around with stuff like that, it's going to change the ballistics a little bit. It's the whole reason we had to stop touring. So we'd also like to thank Robert for coming out and uh, shooting. Thank Robert, you. name of your organization again? It is Rear Guard Warrior Ministries. And be sure and reach Robert uh, either on Instagram at Central Valley Warriors or by email Central Valley Warriors 22 at gmail.com. What you need to do is get on his list if you are active duty or retired military somewhere anywhere in California or locations where you can make it over here. Robert puts on a few uh, free range days, little fellowship range days, uh, a few times a year. So yeah. get on his mailing That's, list. It's a Lamar range, right? Yes. That's a Lamar range, Cup. but we've got guys coming from all the way from Arizona and Northern California before. So oh, okay. Yeah, get nice. on the mailing list and uh, Robert will let you know when another one's coming up uh, in the future. But we thank you, Robert, for coming out and sacrificing his shoulder. Thank you, guys. And yeah. Thank you very much for sending out uh, those. He cool sent out more cool stuff, so yeah. we got more of that on the way. F fine machine work. That's right. Yep. All right. Say hello to the sheep over there, too. <laughs>